We are in the beautiful Clane Karoo this morning. Very diverse area. Going to be looking maybe for some springbok, uh, gemsbok, or even maybe a wildebeest. If I am successful, I hopefully plan to do maybe a poiki with some liver and the heart, or even cook a steak. But um, first going to have my coffee. Got to have a good moor coffee in the morning. Traditional moor coffee, South African ground coffee, into a, into a pot on the fire, bring it to the boil. All I got to do is drop a coal in, and that's going to draw all the grinds to the bottom of the pot. Leave that in for two minutes, and I'm going to have a great cup of coffee. I'm going to be bow hunting here. I'm hoping to either come across some springbok. There's also blue wildebeest, also known as gnu in the area. There's also a lot of zebra. So typically when you're bow hunting, you need to use a range finder, then you've got to put it back. And then you know your different pins on a pin sight gives you your distance. With this, what happens is, basically the range finder is built into this. You, you, you press the button, it ranges, and will set the pin pretty much like a holographic rifle scope. You're not going to get as many wounded animals. You're going to be able to get on target a lot quicker. You know, that makes for more ethical hunting as far as I'm concerned. Ethically, as a hunter, you never really want to wound an animal. You want to try and put that animal down as quickly as possible with no suffering or as little suffering as possible. I mean, that animal's life is just as important as mine and that I've got the right to take it. I want to make sure that I can get rid of the suffering very, very quickly. So currently I'm um, in the Clan Karoo at Hartebeer's Kraal. It's uh, a couple of days away from June and uh, winter is slowly setting in. We've had some very cold days here and uh, in fact we had some snow on the mountain. We've had some rain which is great for the Clan Karoo and uh, it's hunting season. Just spotted some wildebeest down there. There's some good males. I'm going to put a stalk on them now. I've been stalking them from that ridge. I'm gonna go down there now and see if we can get within 30 to 40 meters of them and get a good shot. So I put the sure sight on my bow a couple of days ago and it literally took me 30 minutes to set it up. And where you put that little blue pin is where your arrow lands. It is very, very user friendly. I'm just checking So I can't get on them. They, they're just staying out of bow range. I got to get within 50 meters of them. I can't even get within 80, 90 meters of them currently. So I'm going to go back to the truck and rethink my strategy in order to, to harvest one of these. Okay, so on my way back to camp, I spotted those wildebeest again, decided to uh, give it another go. But uh, unfortunately, today's not my day. So that's hunting, guys. Uh, wildebeest 4, Elder no. Looks like I'm eating beans tonight. So it's a new day here in the Karoo. Hopefully today I have better luck and uh, hopefully I won't be eating beans tonight. Every opportunity I get, I go out there and try and harvest my own food organically, whether it's foraging, hunting, fishing. It's a lifestyle. With, with bow hunting, your ratio of harvesting an animal is only about 40 to 50 percent. You've got to get into close range. You've got to stalk within 40, 50 meters of an animal. So there, there's a little bit of tactic involved in hunting with a bow. 
And um, especially in an area like this, it's not going to be that easy because I do not, you don't have that cover. Well, I've got an earlunt there. He's not what I'm looking for. He's way too big for me to even get out of the, the felt on my own. But it's just interesting. I'm going to see if I, how close I can get to him. He's definitely not my target species. He thinks I don't see him. He's standing dead still. And um, I'm going to try and make a stalk on him just, for, just to see how close I can get. They are unbelievably, they are very good table fare. Excellent eating. But as I said, way too big for what I'm looking for and can handle on my own. Now from, from this distance, that would be a very easy bow kill. Um, but as I said, not what I'm looking for. Just beautiful to see that animal uh, walking around this morning. And we're gonna continue and go see if we can find a springbok. Probably got a good chance to stalk him in that bush. He's gone into the thickets. We're going to try to put a stalk on him. We maybe got a good chance because we've got a bit of cover. Using the sure sight, it definitely makes walk and stalk hunting a whole lot easier. It is definitely a game changer. No more beans for me. We're finally back at camp. Time to get a fire going. Time to get dinner on the go. All right, should be able to skin him nicely. The weather's been extremely cold and a nice hot meal is gonna go down well. I was planning on cooking the back straps. Even though they're very fresh, I'd like to try and see really what the difference is between fresh back straps and usually I age my meat for 10 days. But I'm gonna try today, I'm actually gonna see what a backstrap maybe tastes like fresh. Also plan on uh, making my poiki with the liver and the heart, which I actually left in the animal um, when I gutted it. Well, it looks like the wind's picked up here. It's been extremely cold. This has actually been the nicest day I've had here since I've been out here. You know, nice warm meal. Definitely going to take the cold out of the bones. Wish to try a sauce, one of my staples. Can't go anywhere without it, even hunting. Got to have it with me. And then, of course, a little bit of orange juice. That's going to help take the gamey flavor out of it, make it a little bit more acidic. And I really enjoy this, uh, you know, cooking this liver. It's rich in vitamins and, and minerals. Well, this meal's really looking phenomenal. The, the smell of the garlic and the butter and just this fresh liver and heart is really, I can't wait to sit down for dinner with that fresh bread and really looking forward to it. Oh yeah, that looks fantastic. All right, so here we have uh, for Jun's Drift that I got in Robertson. Great wine and uh, gonna really add to the mix. One final stir and then we are gonna let this cook for a while. Now that my livers are ready and my bread is ready, final step of my, my great meal. Traditionally, you don't, you let your meat hang for a couple of days, but I'm really looking forward to a piece of steak. So I cut a piece of roof string out of a spring block that I shot. It's a very tender cut of meat. And uh, in the rest of the world, we call this the backstrap. I'm gonna grill it up with some butter, some spice, 
a little bit of Fouillon's dripped wine, a little bit of Worcestershire, should make a phenomenal meal. So the sun has set on a wonderful day. My food is ready. Can't wait to eat. Everything looks delicious. And uh, I'm gonna tuck in. There's all these great flavors in there. It's, it's actually hard to explain, but it tastes absolutely phenomenal. You can taste the wine, you can taste the onions, you can taste the tomatoes. And there's that rich, like, virtually like uh, mineral taste due to the liver and the, um, the heart that is in this mix. Thanks to everyone for watching this wonderful adventure. It has been an absolutely incredible experience out here testing this new awesome bow site. And please remember to like and to subscribe to this channel to keep updated of some of our new adventures and videos as well as new products that SureSight will be launching in the near future.